about you. And we've decided that it's time to come back together. For a girls' night out. And it's gonna be so much fun! Yeah, because you know what? We are better together. Listen, ladies, I am so excited, and I want you guys to join us, all of us, on May 6th on a Thursday night at 6.30. It's going to be so awesome. We're gonna have an incredible time. We're gonna do stuff at this sister's event that we have never done before. We have been planning it out, and I'm telling you right now, you do not want to miss. Every single one of these ladies are gonna be there, and they want you to be there too. So write it down on your calendar, Thursday night, May 6th at 6.30, because we're gonna have a great time. Right, ladies? We are so thankful for your continued giving. Here at Compassion Church, it's really easy to give. You can go to compassion.cc slash give, or you can text the dollar amount to 84321 and make sure that you select Compassion Church, Wichita Falls. God, we just thank you for everything that you're doing here at Compassion Church. We pray over this offering and ask that you will just bless it and multiply it and use it for exactly what you want to do. We
There at the start, before the beginning of time With no point of reference You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak Your breath, the planets fall. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you make. Yes, every burning star, a signal fire of grace. Your grace is creation. Your praises so You speak a 
hundred billion failures. Come on, somebody got to shout for that. Yes! Where you lost your life so I could find it right here. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Yes, oh God. Every precious one, a child to die to If you gave your life to love them, so would I Like you would again a hundred billion times But what measure could amount to your desire? He's the one you're the one who never leaves the one behind. Amen. Yes, Come on. Yes, you're the one. Yes, oh. he never leaves us. Amen. He never forsakes us. Do you believe that today? That if the rocks cry out, so will I. Amen. Come on, let's just give him some praise in this place today. Lord, we worship you, God. Father. God, so will I. God, today we choose to worship you, Lord, that no matter whatever we're going through today, God, whatever we're facing, whatever circumstances lay before us, God, today we choose to worship you. Come on, church, it's a choice to worship Jesus. You don't have to, but you should, amen? You should worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Prince of Peace, our Abba Father, our healer, our provider. You ought to worship him today. Come on, just lift your hands to him this morning. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died upon a cross for us, that if you don't do anything else for us, Jesus, that was enough. That was enough. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we choose you. We choose you. We choose to worship you. We choose to love you. We choose to magnify you, God. We choose to lift you up because you are worthy. God, we don't want anybody else to cry out for us, God, because we will cry out. We will worship. We will praise because you are worthy. And you're so, so good and so deserving. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's just take a few seconds and just worship him. I just feel his presence in this place. If you need something today, God, the, if you need something, the Lord is in this place. If you need a touch today, the Lord wants to touch you. If you need a healing in your body, God wants to heal you today. Come on. Do you have enough faith today to believe that he can do anything, that he can do the impossible, that nothing is too difficult for him? I just saw you in Salem. Right, they, uh, they choppered me in. <laughs> What's up? Oh, and I see you're having a little party, too. Is she here? Huh? Huh? Who? Sabrina. I know about you two. I saw you today kissing in the doctor's lounge. <laughs> That's not what you think. That was... You told me I was the only one. <laughs> 
All right, look, that's it. I don't think we should see each other anymore, all right? Look, I know I should have told you this a long time ago, but I am not Drake Ramore, okay? I'm not even a doctor. I'm an actor. I just pretend to be a doctor. Oh, my God. Do the people at the hospital know about this? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody want to help me out here? No, I know, I know. Where am I? University Hospital, the same place you've been for the last 18 years. How, how can you be here and there? Because <laughs> it's a television show. Drake, what are you getting at? <laughs> I'm not Drake. That's right. He's not Drake. He's Hans Ramore, Drake's evil twin. <laughs> Is this true? Well, good morning, Compassion! Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Well, we're sure glad to have you. We start a new sermon series today called Sitcoms. Stories from our living room. How many of you love sitcoms? Amen. This is one of my wife's favorite sitcoms right here. We, to this day, still watch Friends all the time. And in this little clip, you see what happened. This is woman that's crazy. She thinks that Joey is actually Dr. Ramore. She can't figure out how he's there and here and, uh, you know. I want to speak today on many times imitators. Imitating others. What our life begins to, to look like. How others begin to see us. That when we as believers in Christ Jesus, what do people say about our lives? Who are we imitating? You know, even sometimes we begin to Im imitate shows. There's a little part of friends that me and my wife do all the time. My wife says I joke a lot. I totally disagree, don't you? I'm a very serious person. I never joke. That's right, and I shouldn't lie. You know, y'all probably, if you ever watch, who in here watches Friends, raise your hand. Men, you can raise your hand. Half you men got your hands down and you're lying. You watch it too. There, there's, a, there's a show, there are scenes where they come back from vacation, they met some friends, and when they come back from vacation, these friends give them a fake number. And they, you know, in essence, don't want to talk to them again. And, and they're talking about, well, you know, maybe it's because you, you ask so many questions. And like, question, 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 question. But then there's he, she looks at him and said, well, maybe it's because you told so many jokes. Jokes, 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 jokes. So sometimes I'll go somewhere. And I do have a tendency, if, if things were, are awkward, I feel like I, I got to talk. Anybody that way? I don't like awkward silence. It drives me crazy. So because of that, if there's, there's awkward silence, I'll start telling jokes. And my wife will go, joke, 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 joke. What is it, life imitating art? And that's what happens. As we see here, the saying is this, that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Someone once said this, those who do not want to imitate anything produce nothing. In other words, whether we know it or not, we do imitate. We've learned from mothers, fathers. We learn from brothers and sisters. We learn from mentors, teachers, coaches. Whoever it may be, it's had an impact in our life, and we've learned from it. And we begin to mimic them. Today, I want to share with you a passage that God has laid upon my heart. And I want you to get ready. There's going to be a lot of scriptures today. And I want to get you to get ready today. I'm probably going to step on your toes today. And I want you to get ready today. I may just make you mad today. Because if I can be honest, some of you, if you would look at your life, you become imposters. You say you're a Christian. You say you're a believer, but the problem is your life doesn't back it up. What you do doesn't proclaim it. 
You're imitating something. The problem is you're imitating the wrong thing. God's called you to produce, to be blessed. You're anointed. And because of that, God has things that he wants to do through you and in you to not only bless you, but bless those around you. But the problem is many times what we don't realize is what we begin to allow in our life eventually comes out of our life and others, whether you know it or not, see it and it has an impact. It says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God. Of who? God. Who? God. Who? God. One more time. Who? God. As dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us. And given himself for us. And offering and a sacrifice to God, listen to this right here, for a sweet smelling aroma. I, I want to stop there real quick. I want you to hear this. Your life should be a sweet smelling aroma to God. Here's my question Is it true? Is your life a sweet smelling aroma to God, or is it a stench that is rising up to heaven? What is it? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the word that we're about to receive today. And I pray, Lord, that every heart and every mind to be open, God, to receive, Lord, what you've got in store. And not one, not one would leave this service the same way that they came, but be blessed, blessed by your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen and amen. You know, we've all grown up watching TV. You see, we've got these old school TVs. For some of you younger ones in here, you don't know what the back part of this is. You've never seen that. Yeah, I'm looking right at you, buddy, right there. You. You have no idea what the back part of this is. You're sitting in the audience going, what is that that they attach to the TV? Listen, this is actually good. When I was a kid, we had a big old brown one. It was built in a wooden case. Now, here's the funny part. It didn't work, and we had one of these sitting on top of it. Anybody like that? Yeah, right there. You think we at least take the TV out of the room? Oh, no, we stuck this on top of it. And then just to make it more prettier in the living room, we had a big old rabbit ears that most time didn't work. Then we had a hanger on top of the rabbit ears. Yeah? Yeah? Good old days. Good old days before cars. <laughs> Sitcoms have formed our life, whether we admit it or not. We learned a lot of lessons. We learned a lot of things, what to do, not to do. But just like sitcoms, some had very good messages. Some had bad messages. And so it is with our lives. We many times look to others. And there's nothing wrong to look into others. The Bible says, seek the counsel of the wise. That we are to have mentors. And we, we are to have spiritual mothers and fathers. We're to have pastors and leaders. We're to have them within our lives. But right here, Paul in Ephesians begins to say this. He said, listen. I want you to understand, though, that the greatest one that you imitate, the only one you really imitate is God and God alone. Be imitators of God. And there's three things that I'm going to share with you today, and I'm going to try to get it all in here. I've got a lot to give you today, so, so hang on with me. But I, I want to begin to talk to you today about, number one is this, who are you imitating? Who are you imitating? As he said right here, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says it this way, imitate me. Now, he's, Paul's referring to himself, but listen to what he says. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. In other words, Paul says, if I am not imitating Christ, then don't imitate me. Don't be like me. Don't do what I do. But if I am doing what Christ has told us to do, live according to the word, then imitate me. In other words, we have to realize that many times we need an individual, that person in our life that can give us advice, teach us the word, explain what it means. 
And, and right here he begins to say that, you know, kids have great imaginations. In fact, kids will have guns in their hands and they're running around riding a horse and, and they're shooting the, the bad guys. Little girls will walk around as, as a princess in their castle looking for their prince to marry. We all have great imaginations. Uh, my son's nephew, uh, he loves dinosaurs. He loves dinosaurs. And, and he was a T-Rex. And In fact, whatever he did, he was a T-Rex. In fact, to the place that he would do his hands like this. Well, it got so bad that they actually had to take him to the doctor, and the doctors had to tell his parents, don't let him do that anymore. It is messing up his hands. His hands are starting to form that way like a T-Rex. See, that's what happens many times in our life. We begin to imitate others that are not good for us. They're bad for us, and our life begins to reflect them, what they do, how they talk. Amen. I used to tell parents, I had, back when I pastored in Newcastle, I had a family that I knew when mommy and daddy were talking about Pastor John. Because their son would come to church and he couldn't help himself. He would say something to me, give me dirty looks. He would do something that would begin to make me realize mommy and daddy were talking about me. So one day from the pulpit, I didn't go to mommy and daddy personally. I didn't want to hurt their feelings, but I said, hey, mommy and daddy, do me a favor. If you're going to talk about Pastor John, go somewhere where your kids aren't because your kids are coming and they're beginning to give me dirty looks. So we should stop talking about Pastor John in front of them. And I could see the parents going. <laughs> Who are you imitating? Sometimes it's not a person. It's, it's a thing. Sometimes you get mad, you're upset, you're bitter. Things haven't turned out the way you thought and you begin to become just like maybe your father was that way and he was always mad at life and, and always negative and, and that's just the way it was. And you begin to imitate that very thing. See, we have to realize that, that God wants us to be like him. If the greatest form of flattery, if flattery is the greatest form, listen, then what we need to realize is that God wants us to be like him because if we will be like God, then God can bless us. So I want you to stop for a moment and do a self-evaluation. Who do you act like? Turn around and look at your spouse and say, who do I act like? My wife, the other day, I was driving down the road and you know, my, my dad, I got his old car when he passed away, and, and, uh, and, and it, it's a preacher's car. There's, there, there's no other way around it. It's a preacher's car. But I, I usually drive that during the week, and I was driving my dad's car, and my wife pulled up beside me in, in, in her car, and she looked over at me, and she goes, I thought, what in the world is wrong with you? So I got home, and I said, why did you look at me like that? She goes, oh, my God, I saw your dad. I said, well, tonight when you go to kiss me, just think about that. As I get older, I realize I'm doing more and more things like my father. I, I've been in meetings all week in, in South Carolina. I just got back Friday, and, and numerous people walked up to me and said, Oh, my Lord, you sound just like your dad. And I said, Well, I take that as a compliment, and he should too. Who are you imitating? See, right here we're told in Ephesians, in 1 Corinthians, that we are to be imitators of God. That our lives should reflect Christ. Listen, to imitate God, to let Him be a reflection of who we are, then what that means is you must know His Word and know who He is to be able to imitate Him. That means you've got to have a relationship with Christ Jesus. That means you've got to be in prayer. That means you've got to be in the Word. That means that you as men and women of God have got to get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in a relationship with Him because the only way you will know God is if you know God. Does that make sense? That if I want to know my wife, I've got to spend time with my wife. I've got to be with my wife. That you've got to decide who do you want to be. Listen, nothing wrong with wanting to be your mom and dad, but let me say this. I love my dad. He was a great man of God, but he had flaws. My father's first answer to everything was, my wife said it. 
No matter what you say, Dad, can I breathe? Mm, no. It was just his first response. It was just, I don't know why he was that way, but listen, as good as your parents may have taught good things in your life, there's bad things. But see, there's one, there's one who that if you will mimic his life, everything will be great. Everything will be good. So the next question is this. What's imitating you? What's imitating you? Listen to what he says. And walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Are you walking the way that God walked? Are you walking the way that Christ walked? In other words, we can talk all day long about we are Christians, we are believers. But does our life back that up? If I didn't know you went to church, if I never met you before, but I spent a little bit of time with you. Could I, at the end of the conversation, say, oh, yeah, yeah, Laurie's a Christian. Or at the end of the conversation, if someone would told me that you were a Christian, would I go, what? I saw no fruits. I saw nothing of it. See, if we say we're going to be imitators of Christ, then what has to happen is there has to be something in our life that shows that we are imitating Christ. Says James 1.22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but what? I told you I was going to step on your toes today. If you're going to say you're a believer, then do what a believer does. If you're going to proclaim that Christ is the most important thing in your life, then act like Christ is the most important thing in your life. If you're going to say that you want to have a relationship with God, then are you reading your word? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you listen? Do you come to church on Sundays and actually listen to the sermon? Or do you get here and tune me out, get on your phones and do whatever you want to do, but completely not listen to the word of God? See, if you're saying you're a man or a woman of God, then your life should reflect. In other words, he said, walk in love. In other words, what he's saying is, in other words, that if you are imitators of God, the way you walk is an imitation of who God is. Are you? Are you? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, it says this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also what? Reap. Be a jerk. Have an attitude. Get mad at everybody. But guess what you're going to get back? The same. The Bible says if you sow sparingly, then you what? Receive sparingly. You reap sparingly. But if you give generously, then you get back generously. In other words, what he's saying here is, as a believer, my life should be a reflection of my God. If my God was generous, then I'm generous. If my God was giving, then I'm giving. If my God loved, then I love. That everything I do should be a reflection of God who lives in me. Here's the problem with most of us as believers. We say we're believers, but Christ doesn't live in us. Because some of you want to take Jesus where he don't want to go. Mm. Some of you want Jesus to come along with you in places, in deeds, in actions, in words that Jesus doesn't want to be there, but you keep dragging him around. That we realize that our life should be a reflection of Christ. So what happens when we imitate Christ? Look at John 15 verse 9. As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commands, you will abide in my love. In other words, if I, if I imitate Christ, he's the most important thing in my life. What the Bible says is that love will be in my life. 
I don't want you to look at your neighbor. I don't want you to answer this question, but is that person sitting beside you that you know, are they loving? Are they? Don't respond because if you say yes, the other one said don't say yes, that means they're not. Are you loving? Because if I am in Christ and Christ is in me, then if Christ is love, he didn't just make or create love, he is love, then love should be in my life. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. If I'm walking in God, then everything in my life will work out. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to work out. Look back to your neighbor and say, but maybe not the way you thought. See, that's the problem sometimes when we're trying to imitate God. We want God to imitate us. God doesn't imitate you. God, I want this all to work out the way I want it to work out. God says, oh, no, I promise you that all things will work to the good of the kingdom for my glory, for your good. But your good sometimes is not what you want, but what you need. Look at your neighbor and say, you need something different. Because what you do, it ain't working. Mm, nobody said anything then. <laughs> Philippians 4 9 says it this way. These things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. In other words, he says, if you will imitate Christ, you will have peace in your life. Amen. Bad news, I'm all right, going to be good. I'm good, boo. Amen. Just lost your job. I'm all right. I ain't worried. God's got something better. They didn't deserve me anyway. I look better than all of them. Or you're just a terrible employee, one or the other. I don't know. Either way, you'll get it straight this time. But see, if I'm walking in Christ and I'm imitating God, then peace will be in my life. Pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. I don't have to understand what you're going through. All I have to understand is who is with you when you're going through it. Ephesians 4.32 says it this way. And be kind to one another. Please be kind to one another. And tenderhearted. Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Listen, if I'm an imitator of God, then I forgive others as God has forgiven me. Mm. That's a hard one, isn't it? Well, Pastor, you don't know what they did to me, said to me. You don't know how they treated me. It doesn't matter. If I'm an imitator of God, that means I forgive those. Remember Peter? Peter said, Jesus, how many times do I forgive? Jesus said 70 times 7. He wasn't saying 490 times. What he was saying was, is you forgive every time they sin against you. Now, I'm not saying because someone keeps sinning in your life that you keep them in your life. Some people don't need to be in your life, but you still have to forgive them. Some people you don't need to associate with or participate with, but you also need to understand that you can't hold a grudge against them. That as men and women of God, if I'm going to imitate Christ, then what I must understand is that I have to forgive those who sin against me. 1 Peter 1.15. But as he who called you is holy, also be holy in all your conduct. <clears throat> I want all of you to look at me right now. Mm. If you're going to be imitators of God... If you're going to claim to be a believer and a Christian, then your life needs to be holy. Stop pulling out your grace card. Most of you don't pull it out. You walk around with it. Oh, I can do it. I'm saved. Jesus loves me and I'm forgiven. I can go get drunk, get high. I can go do all that stuff, but Jesus loves me. He forgives me. Won't you grow the freak up? I freaked you out right then, didn't I? Why don't you grow up? I'm not talking about as a human being. I'm talking about as a believer. 
You're stuck at the sea of salvation and you got saved so you wouldn't go to hell, but you're missing out on the greatest part of what God has in store for your life. I know I've taught you about grace and I believe in grace, but I'm telling you as a man and woman of God, it goes beyond grace. There is holiness and righteousness and there is a standard that you live as a man or woman of God. You need to understand that. Don't pull up here today and be all excited and loving the Lord, but last night you somewhere you shouldn't be and doing something you shouldn't have done and then act like all oh, everything's okay. For the last few weeks I've been on this. Whoever you are that keeps doing the junk you're doing, would you please stop so I can move on? <laughs> and if you feel like it, just come on up to the altar. We'll pray for you right now. Listen, I'm not saying you won't make mistakes. I'm not saying you won't falter and fail. We all do. What I am saying to you is, is continue to live a life you know is wrong, but trying to make it right and saying it's okay because God forgives me. Listen, you are stomping down on God's grace and God's love for you. Mm. The way that you overcome those sins in your life and have holiness is, is Matthew 4.10. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Can I tell you, do what Jesus did. You know what Jesus did? He resisted the devil. You have to resist the devil. When he calls you to come get drunk and get high, you got to resist him. When he tells you to get mad and cuss and do things you shouldn't do, resist him. So you get all quiet on that. Whether you're quiet or whether you agree or disagree, it doesn't mean you're, that it's not true. Stop doing what you're doing. Resist the devil. Luke 6 says it this way. Now it comes to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Can I tell you another way? Another way that you become imitators of God? You get on your knees and pray. Spend time in the presence of God. Pray, seek Him. You don't have to know some deep, profound prayer. All you got to do is talk to God. God, how you doing? Lord, thank you for this day. God, I'm, and listen, can I tell you, stop praying to get things. And start praying to get in a deep relationship with God. Stop letting the first thing out of your mouth when you go to prayers. I need, I want, can you help? Let the first thing out of your mouth be, God, I love you. And I'm blessed. And I thank you. And I thank you for this opportunity coming to your presence, God. I thank you. And Matthew 4, 23 says this, And after Jesus went about in Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Can I also tell you that if you're going to be imitators of God, then you've got to do something? You don't just go around saying, I'm a believer. God's called you to do something. God's called you to do, for me, it's preaching. It's pastoring. God's called me. To, and listen, there's days I tell you I don't want to do it. There's days I'll tell you that I wish I did something else. But I'm here to tell you. But there's also those moments when God reminds me the call of God is without repentance. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Well, I'm coming to church. Well, bless your little heart. Ain't that wonderful? I'm from the South. That's what we do when there's something, somebody needs some help. We're like, well, bless their heart. What we're really saying is you suck and you need help. <laughs> See, as a man or woman of God, you've got to go beyond where you are. There's got to be, there's got to be action with your faith. Don't just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Every one of you sitting in this church, God's got a call in your life. Whether you believe it, accept it, understand it, God has a call in your life. And if you'll be imitators of God, Jesus Christ left the paradise of heaven to come to this earth, to live 33 years on this earth, and then one day to suffer upon a cross. That's doing, not just talking. Let me close with this. 
Who are you imitating? What's imitating you? Here's the last one. Who's imitating you? Because somebody is. Somebody's imitating you. He says, an offering a, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. For a sweet-smelling aroma. Your life affects those around you. Your life has an impact on those around you. Let me say this. Mark 9, 42 says this, but whoever causes, I want you to listen. I want everyone to hear what I'm about to say to you. Listen to me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. You want to keep living the way you're living, then fine, do it. But let me say this to you right now. If you're a believer in Christ Jesus and you're loving the Lord and you're getting other Christians and men and women of God to participate in the junk you're doing, God said it is better for the milestone to be tied around your neck and thrown in the water than for you when you get to heaven. I want y'all to hear me with this. I'm not joking with this. You're a Christian. You're a believer. You cause other people to go get drunk and do things they shouldn't do. Let me tell you, God's going to deal with yourself. He don't like that stuff. You want to be stupid? Be stupid. But you want to bring down other people with you to make you feel better about the junk you're doing? You're going to pay a price for it. You're going to pay a price for it. Listen, I've had it happen in this church where I've had Christians that started kind of falling away from God and to make themselves feel better. They started pulling other people in my church with them. Doing stuff they shouldn't. And then eventually those people stopped coming to church anymore. The blood of those believers were on your hands is what the Bible says. Pastor, you're being rough on us today. You better believe I am. You better believe I am. But I'm giving you the word of God and the word of God says this. That if you're a believer and you're causing other believers, little ones to stumble, God says I will deal with you. He won't put up with it. I never cuss in my life. Well, let me take that back. One time, prior to going to college, I never cussed. And y'all laugh and say, I I just wasn't a cusser. I don't understand cussing. It makes no sense to me. You you, use your words. Find a better word than that four-letter, three-letter word. Oh, amen. And I never cussed, but when I got to Bible college, I had never seen so many Christians in my life cuss. And it started at first kind of influenced me. I thought, well, if they're Christians, they're doing it, it must be okay. It wasn't okay. I'm at a Bible college and having to deal with more stuff there than I ever did in high school. My friends in high school knew I didn't cuss. My friends in high school knew I didn't do drugs. In fact, I'll never forget one day sitting in the back of a car with some guys, and I hate to say this, they were smoking some, some, some dope. And one of the guys went to lean and give it to me. And one of my friends reached over and put his arm in front of the guy, and he said, uh, John, don't do that stuff. Don't offer that to John. He don't do that stuff. See, I had been an imitator of Christ to my friends, and my friends then knew what I didn't do. Y'all need to hear this. Because some of you are dragging down your friends with you because you feel guilty about what you're doing. And if you can drag down your other Christians with you, it makes you feel better about the stupid stuff you're doing. And I'm telling you, what I just read in the Bible, God will not put up with it. And God will deal with you. First Corinthians 8, 9 says this way, Be aware, at least somehow, this liberty of yours becoming a stumbling block to the weak. First Timothy 4, 12 says it this way, Let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So what should my life begin to 
imitate to people? Love. A good spirit. My faith and my purity. Say that word with me. Purity. Here's the last one and I'm going to close with this. I'm, I've gone over today and I'm sorry. For some of you, you got children that will imitate you. Proverbs 22, 6 says it this way. Train up a child in the way of the Lord. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train a child in the way he should get drunk and he will do it. Train a child up in a way he should not forgive others and hold grudges and he will do it. Train a child in a way that he should smoke marijuana and do dope and he will do it. Train up a child in a way that he talks to others at restaurants when they don't get what he wants and, and they will do it. Train up a child in a way not to show love to their mama or their daddy and they will do it. Train up a child in a way to act and to treat others and they will do it. Whether you know it or not, it doesn't matter what you say to your children. What matters is what you do. They may hear your words, but they see your deeds. If your deeds don't back up your words, they will always, always gravitate towards your deeds. I know this has been a tough sermon. But I want you to be imitators of Christ Jesus. I want your life to glorify his name. Titus 2, 7 says it this way, in all things, in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence. Can I tell you, hear me? Are you reverencing God with your life? Or incorruptible, are you corrupted? by the things of this world. I want you to be imitators of God. You will never find any greater blessings than when you imitate God. You can have peace. You can have joy. You can be confident that God will take care of you. If I will do what God has called me to do, if I will be an imitator of Him, he will meet your needs, answer your requests, give you everything you need if you'll just trust him and imitate Christ. Or you can be like Joey. The woman couldn't tell the difference. Was he Drake Remore or was he Joey? See, many can't tell who you are because you're an imposter. Your life does not reflect Christ. Can I tell you today in Jesus' name, can you put on Christ and live him for others? Amen. Will you stand with me? We want to thank you so much for joining us for our service today. We hope that you've enjoyed it. Before we let you go today, I want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you. And over 2,000 years ago, God the Father gave his son Jesus Christ to die upon a cross for you. That through his death, you would have eternal life. And through the shedding of His blood, you would have forgiveness of all your sins of past, present, and even future. So if you're watching right now, and you're right now living in a life of shame, sadness, and sin, I want to introduce you to my Savior. All you have to do today to be saved is first admit that you're a sinner in need of God's grace and wonderful love. Believe that He is the Son of the living God, died upon a cross for you, rose on the third day, and lives forevermore at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. And with your mouth, confess the Lord of your life, and you shall be saved. So if you're watching right now, and as I'm saying these words, it's touching something in your heart, and you say, today, I want to give my heart life to Christ, then I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus, forgive me my sins, in all of my ways. I ask you to come into my heart and into my life. I repent of my ways and I ask you to be the Lord and Savior of my life forever and ever. Amen. If you just said that prayer with me, I want you to know that you are a child of God. Your sins have been washed away. You're a new creation, the Bible says, and eternity with Christ 
is your reward. Do us a favor. If you gave your heart and life to Christ today, please let us know in the comments or reach out to the church. And we would like to tell you your next steps in following Christ Jesus. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you guys for joining us here at Compassion Church Online. If God has done anything amazing in your life, a story that you want to share, make sure that you comment below and let us know. We hope that you guys have a great week and we'll see you here next weekend. Thank you.